Hello, how are you? Thank you for tuning in. So now, in the olden days, and even in these days, when people want to get a wife in the African customs, they go and they sit on a stool. The elders sit on a stool like this one. And they deliberate and they say, okay, how many cows are you giving us? We want 50. You say, no, we don't have 50. They say, no, no, no. Our girl is very beautiful. Add two. You say, no, we don't have that. Okay, add one. They say, but you know, she has a gap between her teeth. Give us an extra goat. Uh -huh. And they, they sit down, they agree. Sometimes they disagree. At the end of the day, dowry is paid. And a girl goes to another home. And that is a marriage. Now, today we're going to discuss customary marriages now as far as customary marriages go the law presumes that they are potentially polygamous so unless your community specifically has a, a law a custom against polygamous marriages the law classically assumes that all customary mar marriages are potentially polygamous a polygamous marriage is where one man can take several wives so as far as customary law goes, there is no limit to the number of wives. So a, a man can take as many wives as possible. So a person who has contracted one polygamous marriage has continuous perpetual capacity to contract other polygamous marriages. However, a person that has uh, contracted customary marriage does not have the capacity to contract uh, any kind of monogamous marriage. However, if a person has married their wife in a customary arrangement and they agree that they do not want this marriage to be polygamous, they can register they can they can agree and sign a document and take it to the registrar so that the registrar knows although this marriage is customary, this marriage is not open to any other wives. That makes it monogamous. Now for customary marriages, it goes with the custom of the specific community that the man or the wife belong to. For example, let's say Motiso meets Hadija in Moranga. Motiso comes from the Kamba community, Hadija comes from the Giriyama community, and they live in Moranga where people around them practice the Kikuyu custom. Now. Motiso and Hadija cannot marry under Kikuyu customary law, although they live in Moranga, because Motiso and Hadija do not belong to the Kikuyu community. However, Motiso can marry Hadija as per the Kamba traditional customs, or he can marry Hadija under the Giriyama customs. Whichever they choose, they can choose either or they can do both. Now, for customary marriages, Today, the Marriage Act requires that customary marriages have to be registered. For some reason, people believe that when people are married under customary law, they do not register their marriages. In the past, before the Marriage Act 2014, people never used to register customary marriages. However, today the law requires that even a customary marriage must be registered. So the law requires that after the rights uh, and the customs have been performed and whatever has whatever needs to be done for for it to amount to marriage has been done then the couple needs needs to register their marriage within three months and the registrar will take six months to then give them a certificate of marriage which indicates that they're married under customary law and it also indicates under the customs of which community they are married under Today, if a couple takes any facility from a bank, they're going to, they're going to, if, if, if they say that they're married, they're going to need, they're, they're, they're going to have to present their spousal consent and they will have to present their certificate of marriage, even in the event that that marriage is a customary marriage. Now, unlike other forms of marriage, which take a day or take one process, you see, for a civil marriage, people will, will, people will go to the AG or to the DC's office in one day. For a wedding, it will be officiated in one day. For a Hindu marriage or even a Muslim marriage, it can be officiated in one day. However, most customs have many, many long processes. Now, 
you need to understand the specific processes in your community because if that process is not complete then it means that the marriage is not valid for example many communities will have the first step where people go and introduce themselves then they will have the second step where the elders who sit on this tool negotiate sometimes the elders agree sometimes they do not agree sometimes even after the agreement what amounts to dowry payment or what amounts to a marriage takes another step Sometimes couples start these processes and they don't finish them and continue to live for very many years together and then something happens and they say but you know he's my husband or she's my wife and the family says no you did not marry her yes you came for introduction but you never paid her dowry or yes you paid her dowry and you never finished so you never you need to be very careful to know your own customs the customs of the person you're marrying and to know what in that custom amounts to a marriage. I hope that this broadcast has been useful to you. Please write to us with your questions at cyrilloglobal@gmail.com. Once more, we would like to thank Chigiti and Chigiti Advocates for facilitating the shooting of this series. Thank you. Take care of their families. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.